the tail. So we can ask, what does a chemical property of that stuff? If it's a carbohydrate or a cellulose, it's not that the same kind of similar structure as maybe a hydrocarbon. Do you think we could use that as a feedstock instead of hydrocarbon? Would we be able to replace things like fiberglass with these fibers? Would we be able to create maybe an island of binary instead of a refinery? So, I want you to dream big. I want you to dream big, even bigger, even bigger. I want you to think of solutions that don't even possibly exist because that's what engineers do. Engineers dream about bridges that don't even appear physically possible. Engineers dream about dams that hold millions of tons of water back and create energy for millions of people. Engineers dream about machines that can fly that can defy gravity. So when my team was presented with this particular picture, these are the kind of things we were dreaming about. A car whose body is made out of uh, made out of firefighter. A car whose body is constantly improved by the use of biofibers because these materials are lighter weight than fiberglass. We dream about buildings. We dream about buildings that use those biomass, those biomaterials. To improve your environment, so there's less off-gassing and perhaps even increased efficiency because natural materials provide better insulation than the alternative. We dream about green chemicals. We dream about using these materials in different applications in our all of the and we dream about all of, all of the things that we could replace with. Carbohydrates and cellulose is that hydrocarbons. Here's the next step. Step two. Build team. Engineers learn very early on that we can't solve all of those problems by ourselves. Unfortunately, I may not know what that means, but we can't just. We often take big problems and we divide them into smaller tasks and divide them among the team. We also realize that not all problems can be solved by fluid mechanics and thermodynamics. There are a lot of um, complex parts that add to those questions to find the solution. Things like, things like social, environmental um, uh, implications to these problems. And so you need a whole team of people from all sorts of walks of life and all sorts of professions to come together to solve that problem that you're trying to address. You need artists, you need engineers, you need economists, you need uh, all sorts of different people. So what we did, for example, in my team, we actually created a network called the Alberta Biomaterials Development Center. And in this network, I have access to engineers, I have access to scientists, I have access to entrepreneurs, I have access to growers, farmers. I talk to all sorts of people every day. I'm not just working with engineers. And together, we're able to create a whole value chain solution to a particular problem. We often say that our logo is from seed to final product. So I have a broad enough for three years on the front end. I'm saying question something like, if this draw does this and provides this functional property, is there some way that we can maybe breathe those properties to be better? Can we enhance those properties from the planet or from some way of, of harvesting it? And the next person I have in that line is the person that processes it. So, how do we process these materials better? How can we change these? How do we create this value chain? 
And then the next person is actually in the time of building protocols for that kind of stuff. And what I can ask you to find I need people to conceive the value in this problem and have enough energy and spirit to actually create it into a business. Because we can create all sorts of really cool prototypes and all sorts of really cool prototypes. But unless someone has to resort to commercializing, it really doesn't mean a lot at the end of the day. And you dream of all sorts of good things. And you can have this fantastic network of people that you can grow them to zero. And he has loved you to zero the way. We really do have you to stop at that particular point. But this is not going to happen unless you make it happen. So this is what I, I love talking about this stuff because this is what my team has made happen. It's a company down in Calgary called Santa. Pretty much, it's actually a drilling for this company. It comes from the oil and gas side. And they sold an erosion control product for this company. So, erosion control is that stuff that you can spray onto the side of the hill and it all kind of comes through there. And it's going to keep that material stuck to the side of the hill so that the rain can go. This company, but you know, we have a, we have a bunch of chemistry uh, background and a bunch of knowledge. We think we can make this product better. And so they interacted with us and we developed this new product. And they took it down to the time of mass testing. During monsoon season, this product that they sprayed on the side of the earth held up better than anything this time of mass that we have seen so far. This product works 20% better than anything else on the market. It's just incredible. And so now, this company got targeted back to the commercializing. They're building a factory to manufacture this product. This actually going to be sent, a lot of it's going to be sent down to the company that's now to use. This is another way of saying something. A scientist I work with invented a product called Oriented Straw Threaded Wool, OSD. So traditionally, OSD is made from wood. The scientists I work with thought so, I thought, you know, I think we could test this into a good one. I think it'll actually increase some functional properties of this material. And so when he created this, this product, when we went through the whole engineering design thing, uh, we actually got hooked up with an entrepreneur who decided to commercialize it in China because in China they don't have a lot of trees. And you can imagine what's happening in China with the growth and the food and how many cows and trees we can get. Well, now they can use this OSD uh, to build a lot of those houses and different buildings. This particular building that I think is pretty cool was at the Richmond Expo a few years ago. And this entire structure is built from this OSD. So this, we use hemp fiber, uh, and we put it in a, a resin, and so this is actually what's called a biocomposite. And uh, this, and it, it's very cool, and I love this product because we have a lot of fun at work with this thing. <laughs> and you can only imagine that it probably has a lot of popularity with trees, or it's just an interesting search for this company, right? I mean, it has long hair, it's pretty cool. But what this actually proves is we were able to test the properties of this and prove that biocomposites work and were actually able to do what they needed to do in terms of strength. And now we can actually do the next step, which is turning into that five footprint that we were doing, okay? So now we're looking at the company that Calgary that's trying to build a car body out of hemp cells, out of our capsule hemp. So it's just an incredible story. So how sexy am I? Right? I hope today that I've really have gotten you excited about talking about 
Because when all of that comes together, you can still try to have a 